This guy uh, who uh, who wrote uh, you know a, a, a three magnificent books that should grace not just your shelves but your brains. That would be uh, Rollback, Meltdown, and Nullification. Uh, and the new one, uh, On the Road to Serfdom, again. Uh, the, um, uh, this, and, and, uh, and articles and speeches and stuff. I mean, this guy is, a, uh, uh, this guy is the fountain of, uh, of information. You've got plenty of, uh, plenty of things on YouTube you can watch, lots of articles you can read at tomwoods.com or over at uh, lewrockwell.com and so on. And it's always, um, always a hoot. And an education uh, to uh, have him on, and we got him again, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Woods, Thomas E. Woods Jr., author, intellectual, pundit, extraordinaire. How was that? Was that okay? <laughs> Thanks, Brent. All I can say is I hope Toledo appreciates what it has in you, because there are not many hosts who feature guys like us, and you know, for anything other than sport. So it's very good of you to get mm. us out there. Yeah, well, I, uh, it's unfortunate that the uh, that some of my uh, alleged colleagues in the uh, news end of the building uh, think uh, having uh, having Ron Paul up on the DS with those other seven posers is uh, is great sport. But uh, that's uh, that's just me, and uh, that's uh, we've had uh, we've had those conversations with uh, with Dr. Paul himself, and uh, continue to do so. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about a bunch of things. Uh, I want to talk about neckties. I want to talk about speeches. I want to talk about your book. I want to talk about, uh, you know, you sent an email that we had the other day that you were just finishing up a big project. And I wrote back and I said, does that mean there's a new Thomas E. Woods Jr. book coming out? And you uh, blithely ignored my uh, my question. So <laughs> I'm so tired of writing books. And plus, I feel like I've said everything I have to say. I can't believe, I mean, at this point, I've talked about, you know, Meltdown 2009, I, I dealt with the issue of the financial crisis because I thought, if I hear one more person say that we had a financial crisis because we stupid boobs were allowed to have freedom, and, and that's, that's the usual claim. The government comes right. along and says, you see what happens when we leave you people to yourselves? You go screw everything up, and then we have to come in and fix everything. If I hear that one more time, I'm going to commit an atrocity. So I did, you know, I wrote a, a book trying to explain that, well, basically the government and the Federal Reserve, you took them out of the picture, we wouldn't have had this, this crisis. And yet it's like this, these are sorts of lessons that you can only write meltdown once. You can only say that, you can only, I mean, once yeah. I've said it, what more is there to say? <laughs> you know, it's frustrating that um, although we are making huge strides in making the, the issue of the, of the Fed a, a, a big one that people actually care about now, it's still frustrating that the, the key commentators on this stuff, even on right-of-center radio, are people like Dick Morris they have on to talk about why we're having a financial crisis. What does Dick Morris know about this? Right? I mean, well, it, yeah. I don't know. For a, guy who's, for a guy who loved his toes as much as Dick Morris did, I would think that... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what, you know, let's let's talk about that for a second, uh, specifically with respect to the Fed and uh, and so on. Um, the uh, I mean, I've had some interesting conversations with some people who are involved with the uh, uh, with the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement. Uh, Chris Vinvenidis, for example, you may have seen his uh, his video. We're talking about end the Fed, big Ron Paul supporter. We've had him here on the show. Right. Uh, what what is what is your t I mean, when, when you get away from from all the drama. You know, and all the stuff that the media wants to show for ratings and so on. Uh, what is your sense of that uh, of that operation up there? Is it just a bunch of uh, aged hippies and Soros back people and Acorn folks all in involved, or or is there a, is there a glimmer of reality and truth that can be a takeaway from that? Well, you know, it's hard to know without actually being there because I do think there are all different types of people there. But when I have seen footage of, for example, Peter Schiff actually went out there. Peter Schiff's a great free market yeah. guy, really smart, articulate. He went out there and started and discussing things with them, and th their understanding is of everything is extremely primitive, extremely left-wing, just as you would expect. And then I read that somebody polled the attendees at this thing, and apparently slightly more than half of them supported the bank bailouts. Like, wh <laughs> I mean, hello? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, what yeah. the heck is this? I mean, is, is, this is like Big Bird skeet shooting or something. There's something wrong with this, right? Why do they not get this? So I do. Well, I guess they probably figured that they uh, that their parents, uh, you know, they're, they're, none of them uh, seem to be starving. We've uh, we've read the menu of what they have to have. They got nice Birkenstocks and great clothes and hairdos and so on. Uh, this does not look like the uh, like the great unfortunate unwashed. Yeah, uh, there is there is that. Although I, I suppose these are probably people of relatively modest means, but none of them appreciate the fact that they are living in conditions of 
of unbelievable opulence compared to pretty much any other time in world history and any other place in the world. And mm -hmm. how did that happen? Did that happen because, uh, uh, you know, left-wing anarchists made a bunch of demands, or was it because private property owners coordinated production to make it possible for us all to afford shoes and clothing? Yeah, now you just zoomed over the heads of that crowd. They, uh, uh, let, let's, uh, let's move over to, um, uh, to your piece that was on uh, Lou's uh, uh, site, LouRockwell.com, the other day, uh, The Idolatry of the Market, oh. uh, and you address, uh, address uh, you know, with a, with a really nice, uh, nice piece on uh, Phil Lawler's uh, uh, column uh, on your website. The, um, uh, you know, I read that thing when it came out and I said, gee, you know, I, um, I, I, I kind of figured that the, uh, that the Pope would pretty much take care of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the sins and the trespasses, and I would take care of the debts and the debtors part. I, uh, uh, it, 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 what, was, it, what was the sense, what, what sense do you have of why did, the, why did the Vatican come out with this thing in the first place? Well, it's this Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, which, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. I'm, in, I'm all in favor of justice, and I'm all in favor of peace. But you know in left-wing circles what justice and peace always means, and I'm afraid it's oh, yeah. the same is true in the Vatican. So, I mean, it is, it, you know, they, these are basically conventional left liberals uh, over there. And uh, although the Pope himself had a document uh, last year that also seemed to call for some type of global structure for the economy, and uh, when they do things like this, they don't attract anybody to the church. No, no, no leftist immediately says, ah, well, that's just what I was waiting for. Now, where's the baptismal font? Now they've... <laughs> They've adopted my economic views. I'll be right over. But what they do do is repel other people who say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does this mean if I become a Catholic, I have to support some kind of world central bank? No, of course you don't. I mean, these are entirely matters of opinion. I mean, obviously, the church can't have an official position on how banks should be recapitalized, for heaven's sake. And this is obviously it was just speculation on their part. But it's, it, I think it's unfortunate because it makes Catholics feel like, well, gee, am I being disobedient or something? This is really wrong for them to do. And for them to use this term, uh, that, to, to, to use this phrase, there's been an idolatry of the market going on, is just so, that is, to hear the Vatican, of all places, repeating the conventional wisdom. We haven't had an idolatry of the market. If we had an idolatry of the market, I'll tell you what would have happened. If we had an idolatry of the market, when people were buying houses like crazy, interest rates would have been allowed to go up to reflect the fact that people are borrowing like crazy to buy houses and that the rising interest rates would have told other people stop borrowing to buy houses but instead of getting that market signal the federal reserve kept intervening to make all the the red lights green to to prevent the market from telling us what it was trying to tell us pushing interest rates down lower if we had really been listening to the market as the vatican implies we would have stopped the housing bubble dead in its tracks. The interest rates would have been so high, no one would have wanted to invest in it anymore. As an investment, you know, flipping houses and all that would have been nipped in the bud. So we've had, instead, what we've had is an idolatry of central banks and an idolatry of the public sector, where we've thought that there's nothing they can't do. If they want to increase home ownership, well, they just pass a law. That's all you have to do. You want to get rid of the law of gravity? Just pass a law. If that's where the idolatry has been. Yeah, well, I'm working. Uh, well, the administration is working on that right now with student loans, which I uh, oh, yeah. wanted to. You know, they, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pandering. It's it's buying votes. Everybody. I mean, I would think everybody would know that's exactly what's what's going on. It's a setup uh, to try and get this law passed, which of course will get shot down. So the uh, the president will have more ammunition for uh, you know for his campaign. But the but the moral hazard here. that we talk about morality. Isn't there a and I don't want to get off into into an ecclesiastical uh, you know discussion here necessarily because I'm just a junior varsity Catholic myself as an Episcopalian. But the uh, the isn't there isn't there a danger of a, of of a of, of the Catholic Church uh, supposedly the bastion of what's supposed to be moral and good and upright and true and so on uh, you know in our in society around the world uh, you know taking a taking a position that is uh, as you just pointed out is is essentially contrary uh, to reality. I, I think it clearly is, and I think it's also contrary to uh, basic standards of morality in, in the sense that uh, what they should be focusing their frustration on are our central banks, the whole banking system in general, which is the least free market sector in the U.S. and in any country because it's all governed through a central bank cartel structure uh, that inflates the money, that, that makes it worth less, that ruins people's savings, that creates instability in the economy, that rewards 
the politically well-connected, that bails out the, the wealthy. Uh, you know, you would think there'd be some moral criticism of that, and, and, and you hardly do see it. Now, on the other hand, there is one strong merit that this document has, which is the analysis is kind of okay in that they understand that what we've just witnessed over the past 10 or so years is the inflation of financial bubbles and, and speculative bubbles that made possible by all this money creation and, and artificial credit creation gets out in the economy and creates these financial bubbles that then burst. Okay, great. That's, a, that's very true. That's exactly what's happened. But then it's like the rest of the document is written by a completely different person because it then goes on to say, well, then the, pr the solution to the problems caused by these forces in these countries is, is a giant global force with exactly the same powers. Well, I mean, no. Maybe we strip them of these powers. Maybe we tame these central banks so that they can't keep blowing up these financial bubbles on us. Turn off the air pump. Don't give us a, just another gigantic air pump.